done. I'm a bassist. How am I supposed to remember that it's Friday and viewers' comments come out on Friday? Like all the rest of the bass players out there, get an adult to remind you. It's Friday. Hope you're going to have an amazing weekend out there in lockdown land. Hopefully this just makes it go by a little bit easier. Your comments, your questions. Let's get right to them, shall we? Isn't working in the music industry about working in the music industry? Like, leave fame and famous people out for a change. There are hundreds of unknown engineers and producers out there that can give you good tips. Always be open to learn no matter who or where they are. Also, a doctor save people's lives every day and they don't get awards for that? Why the fuck should everyone else get one? Do your work, be proud of it, help other people and be happy. Easy. Well, hey Peter, thank you so much for the vote of confidence. It, it really does make me feel good to hear that you guys are getting some use out of the show and that you're finding some value in my tutorials and whatnot. Yeah, I'm nobody famous. I don't have any awards and never have claimed to be and I certainly don't have any hit records. All I have is 22 years of experience working in a studio, working with local bands, and dealing with a lot of the same problems that you guys will be dealing with. Because most of us aren't probably gonna be doing chart-topping records. Most of us are in the trenches and working with the local bands, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Using a tube mic is a gimmick. Anyways, who wants an overdriven, saturated sound from a mic anyways? Tube mic is a gimmick. Um, I'm gonna leave that to you guys in the comments. If anybody wants to chime in about the value of a tube mic and why anybody would want one as opposed to just a say a regular solid state mic have at it please i would absolutely love to hear from you and as far as my experience with tube mics go being the guy who's been working in the trenches all these years when we were working in harmony we had a vintage neumann u48 a tube microphone and happened to record a very famous vocal song from some chick named Adele. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. Didn't really sound very distorted now, did it? Everybody knows the sound of that mic. Now I'm not saying I'm some famous guy. No, not at all. That session was long gone before I ever got a chance to work in there. But it was pretty cool that that mic was there and available and I did wind up using it as a mono room mic on the Leica Fujin mix. If you guys never checked that out, uh, it's a lot of fun. Hey Glenn, what Ibanez was that? I'm after a decent seven string for B tuning and maybe A if possible without busting my golden balls. I can got to around 2K, but would rather not. You're referencing the Ibanez I was using in the audio assault demos and this is, what the fuck is this anyway? This is an RG7321. I think I got this for 350 US at Guitar Center about sometime in 2012. It's pretty cool. It's got like a low profile neck joint. It's nothing special. Uh, we changed the pickups out. I put a Seymour Duncan in here and yeah, this guitar absolutely, absolutely rocks. It's got great solid tuning and yeah, with a better pickup, it gets great tones. You certainly don't have to bust the bank on a super expensive guitar to get great results these days, especially with all the amazing guitars coming out of China and Indonesia. Everything's being made by CNC machines, so it's really hard to fuck those guitars up. Speaking of Chinese guitars, I'm working with GOC. You guys saw me playing one of those uh, last week with the Gig Performer demo, and that was a seven string headless, and that was a really cool guitar, and I've got some super exciting news coming up about GOC that I know you guys are gonna like. But yeah, I went looking for another one of these last fall at Guitar Center in Hollywood and couldn't find it. It's like they make cheap seven strings still, but they're a little unbalanced, I find. The neck is a little bit heavy for the body. This one was just right. In fact, I remember Brandon and I went over to Detroit to Guitar Center. We checked it out and I went home and kind of hummed and hawed about it for a few days and drove back and went and got it. And I've had it ever since. And it's been an absolute workhorse. Great guitar. But for what's available these days, I would definitely recommend going to a store, picking a few up and trying them out and seeing just how well it works for you. But you absolutely do not have to spend anywhere over $700 to get something truly awesome these days. If you're unsure, get a Solar. No need to cattle prod the bass player. Just take away his weed and tell him that he doesn't get it back till he plays bass properly. You end up with free weed. Yeah, I can see the logic in that. Hey guys, just gonna break in here for a second. Almost forgot this. I've got a super deal going on right now for today and today only. It's Adam Steele's Ultimate Reaper Production Guide. It's available now in Pro Mix Academy. Adam's a really good friend. He's from the YouTube channel Hot Pole Studios. He's even made an appearance on SMG Oldies But Baddies with his amazing cover of Morningtown Ride. Ugh. 
What a horrible song. What a great cover. Anyway, Adam is what you would call a Reaper expert, and he's got his new lesson out now. And he takes you through his whole process to make your workflow much more efficient than you would get with Reaper, say, straight out of the box. He knows how to set the fucker up to make it work the best for you. And then he's also got a lesson where he takes you front to back, recording a song, takes you through every step in Reaper and how to do it, basically. Adam's pretty much made the Reaper lesson I would if I had the patience and the time. So for all you guys asking, hey, Glenn, when are you going to do a Reaper lesson? Well, until that happens, check out Adam's. It's on sale for today and today only for 97 bucks. So grab it while you can. Links in the description below. Now back to the show. Music videos, especially from metal bands, are contrived, cliched, and invariably shit. It's all been done. Then again, that describes the almost entire metal genre at present. Well, I certainly know we're not going to get anything groundbreaking from you now, are we, Jimmy? Problem is, this song is as fuck. Can't always blame the bass player if the song sucks. Wow, that's a really interesting insult, considering one of the best metal singers on the planet happens to be gay. Hey, Steve, I don't know, maybe try not being such a hateful bigot? Just a thought. People who says that everything has been done are the same people who will just do nothing and then complain that they don't achieve anything. They will also tell you you're wasting your time if you get off your ass. Can't wait for this episode. I think there's some real truth in that. I know I've certainly taken some shit from a lot of people for going for it every fucking day. I always come back to the Henry Rollins book, Get in the Van. A lot of his friends gave him shit for joining Black Flag, getting on the road and fucking doing something with his life other than the standard nine to five. Yes, that is one thing that is absolutely true. If you are going for it and you're trying to break some new ground, the people around you will try to hinder you because ultimately your hometown does not want you to win. But if you're going for it, my hat's off to you. Keep going for it. Hi Glenn, excellent channel. It can get really valuable information. I've been wanting to ask you for some time, have you ever recorded something in Linux? I live in a country devastated by communism. The chances of buying a fairly decent performance computer are slim. I've used Linux for a long time, trying to give my laptop a little more life, but now in this quarantine, I have decided to take out my Focusrite Scarlett 2i4 and record something with Tonelib and Adore. Any recommendations? Thanks in advance and keep kicking the butts of fools who criticize you. That makes the channel fun and educational at the same time. Now I'm going to hand this off to the viewers because I know a few of you guys are definitely Linux users. I don't know the first thing about recording in Linux other than Harrison Mix Bus was based on top of our door. And I want to check out the new version of Harrison Mix Bus. Apparently they've really stepped it up in terms of live monitoring, that kind of thing. But when it comes to actual Linux installs, that's just completely an alien language to me. I mean, I thought I was doing all right learning, learning the Mac OS and working on a Mac after being a PC user for all these years. I still use a PC. I don't even, wouldn't even know where to begin with Linux. Can we even get a laptop with Linux installed on it? What's the recording software out there? What's the driver situation? Now, for you guys watching this who are Linux users, could you please chime in on the comments because I'd love to hear from you. This is a whole new world for a guy like me, and I'm sure a lot of us would love to have some questions answered. I know that Glenn's thing, but geez, the song arrangement and production sound ridiculously dated. 1985 or something. Again, to each his own, but I understand he grew up with that kind of thing, but it's super intense on this one. Other than that, the a very informative video and actually interesting tool. Okay, you're referencing the Note EQ demo, and if you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend it because it's an extremely useful tool. I'll say this, and I need to do a video on this at some point detailing it, but all of my favorite drum sounds all came before the year 2000, before everything started getting replaced with samples. I like the sound of real drummers, there's a million other guys out there who are doing the quote unquote modern metal drum sound thing where everything's sample replaced and time aligned and whatnot. There is absolutely no shortage of that whatsoever. I'd rather do my own thing and go for it in my own way. Guitars and bass sounded rad, but those drums, dude, especially the snare, man. Oh, that was on the RVXX demo. And I gotta thank Jackson Ward for the amazing performance and drum recording. I merely mixed them. I've been farming out a lot of the background music to Jackson Ward and Eric Arco's kind of joined on board during the lockdown and, and John Suki's made a lot of appearances on the show as well. I think Jackson's making his services available. So if you guys want like a real drummer for backing tracks, I highly, highly recommend the dude. I'll throw a link in the description of that as well. Go check out his channel, Strata Recording. The guy's a hell of a drummer and a hell of an engineer and he's been instrumental in making this show happen over the last year. Jackson, you fucking rock, dude. Your tracks are so so easy to mix them. Thank you so much. Hey, 
Hey Glenn, awesome content as always. Have you ever considered teaming up with some software guys and making some SMG plugins? I love to see something like the cock blocker noise gate as a digital thing. Well, hey Jake, believe me, that thought has crossed my mind more than once. All I can say is great things are afoot at the Circle K. Just be patient. Cool stuff's coming. Glenn, what's your favorite bass to track with? This is, I picked this up for $200 Canadian on like a local Craigslist thing called Kijiji. This is a made in Mexico Fender jazz bass and it's stellar. It's rock solid, plays great, sounds great, sits in a mix great. Uh, you have to run the pickups all at full blast or it's buzzy as shit. Other than that, it's fucking absolutely amazing. I've had guys come in with American Fender Jazzes and ask me to trade for this thing. I'm like, no fucking way. Can't recommend a Fender Jazz enough. This, this is my absolute favorite bass to record. My second favorite is my Dingwall. Don't waste your time with this piece of shit. It's made in China. And so is the smartphone you're typing your witty commentary into, you fucking genius. Way to alienate a good percentage of your subscribers, dude. Metal rules, but Christ is real. Unsub. Instead of unsubscribing, you could prove your faith by praying to him that I will stop ridiculing your religion. Of course, we all know that's never gonna happen, so see you later. It never ceases to amaze me. And I, I, Finn McGinty said something like this a couple weeks ago, too. It's like, you know, oh, I like your channel, I like your channel. You said something I don't like, I'm unsubscribing. Look, we're allowed to disagree with each other. I might not necessarily respect what you believe because I find it to be ridiculous nonsense, but that doesn't mean I don't respect your right to believe. You can absolutely believe whatever crazy bullshit you want as long as it doesn't endanger anyone else in the community, especially with covert religious gatherings going on these days and spreading around COVID-19 and that kind of thing. Like seriously, how many pastors dropped dead from this shit over the last month or two because they thought somehow the rules didn't apply to them? Hey Glenn, what are your tips on home recording when you're in your bedroom with a bass amp, a guitar amp, and a drum kit? I have three mics, two are on the drums, and one is on the guitar amp, and the bass is direct. Where should I put the mics for the best sound? Go check out my video on the Glenn Johns technique for your drums and try that. And I don't know, maybe do a scratch track with the guitar first and use that third mic on your drums and track that second. That might work. Unless you got a band that's working together. I definitely recommend the track by track method because you're not gonna be able to play it all at the same time anyway. And if you are and we're supposed to be on lockdown, well, shame on you. Those people working to record for free just watch Bohemian Rhapsody and pay close attention to the part where they sell the van to a Ford studio time. Put your money where your mouth is, motherfucker. Well, fortunately, the cost of studio time has come down considerably over the last 30 or 40 years. And I don't think anybody really needs to sell their van to afford studio time anymore. All you gotta do is maybe drink a little less beer. Hey Glenn, what do you think about building a guitar cab rather than buying one? I've been thinking about it just because I know it can give you a really different tone, but I'm not sure if it would be worthwhile. Thank you. Hey Ty, that's a fantastic question. I've even got an answer for that one because back in the 90s, my very good friend Steve Chason built a custom guitar cabinet for a friend of ours. And he's the guy who helped me build Spectre here. He did most of the woodwork and he just was absolutely brilliant at what he did. But back in the late 90s, I remember he put together a cabinet where we kicked the front out and angled it and whatnot. We nicknamed it the Dalek Cab because it just kind of looked like it a little bit. And it did have an extremely unique tone. We, nobody had really heard anything like it before. It just had this massive low end resonance that was just super cool. Now, the thing about building your own cabinet really comes down to time. How much free time do you have to do this? Because it is an awful lot of work, especially if you don't do woodworking every single day. It is going to take some time. Of course, the alternative would be grab a two by 12 from Harley Benton and just drop in whatever speakers you want because it's a dirt cheap way to do it. And if you're in the States, you can check out some of the Mojo Tone cabinets. I've got one sitting in at LA with a port in the bottom. I can't wait to mic it up. Unfortunately, I had to come home for the whole outbreak thing. So hopefully I will get to do an episode on that sometime this year. I noticed Glenn is starting to do that thing that old people do where they tilt their head up while reading. That's because I'm going to be 50 in a few months and these are bifocals. So when I do this, I'm actually focusing so I can read something. It happened to me with age and guess what? It's probably going to happen to you too. Just wait a while. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't, please hit that fucking subscribe button. It just goes a long <laughs> way into helping things out and means the world to me. I hope to hit 400,000 subscribers sometime this summer. Uh, we're going to have an update on that coming up real soon as well. Anyway, until next time, thank you so much for watching and stay home, stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you guys again real soon. Take care.